Hi, I'm John from Gentleman & Whiskey, and I got this comment this week asking what my favorite available bottle is, so in typical John overthinking fashion, I'm going to lay out all of the ones in each price point from $20 to $100+. Plus. <laughs> So let's talk about available bottles. Tons of people say that there's better bottles on the shelf. That's what our series Shelf versus Tater seeks to find out. Today we're going to talk about my favorite available bottles in each price point. So since a lot of my viewer base is here in Pennsylvania, where I am also located, I am limiting the criteria to specifically Pennsylvania available bottles. I went on Fine Wine and Get Spirits website and I said, okay, no online only bottles and they have to be available in more than a hundred stores. My basic philosophy is if Pennsylvania has it, then it's pretty much going to be anywhere. There are quite a few bottles that I would love to have on this list, but Pennsylvania just doesn't carry them or there's glaring inconsistencies as to where they are carried. I'm going to keep this to super simple, very basic, pretty much always available. So I'm going to start off by taking a sip of my favorite available bottle, and I will reveal what that is to you at the end. So it's gonna be one of these on the price points list. We're gonna go zero to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, 80 to 100, and 100 plus. So we're gonna go every 20 bucks, the tier price points. There's not always going to be better bottles that are more expensive. So I'm gonna take a taste of this, and at the end you'll find out what it is. Mmm, so good. So in the under $20 price point, there is quite a few bottles that people are absolutely crazy over. One of them being Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. So Evan Williams Bottle and Bond is one that people say is a competitor to much more expensive bottles. I personally just don't get it. It is a good whiskey. Don't get me wrong. It is a great mixer. It's 100 proof, which is more than you can generally ask for in that under $20 range but it's just weird and grassy to me, and it's very clear that it's young. I actually like Evan Williams 1783, which is only 90 proof better than the Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. But ultimately, I'm picking neither of those. In the under $20 category, probably the most divisive bottle on this list, to me, is Old Tub. So it is Jim Beam, it is 100 proof, it is Bottle and Bond, and it is unfiltered, and I think it's fantastic. It is a great one to make old fashions with, it's versatile, and that's what you want in that under $20 price point, and I think it's tasty. I enjoy sipping an old tub. It is just crazy flavorful to me, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that I don't mind putting in a cocktail, but I also can sip if I want to. Old Tub fits all those categories. There's tons of people that hate it, and I get it. It can be really funky and really weird to people, but I think, honestly, it is a budget king. It is one of those bottles that I think ultimately punches above its weight class. It's one of those that I think stacks up with much more expensive bottles. So, $20 price point, Old Tub. Gonna sip what may or may not be Old Tub. Bottle is just fantastic. Okay, next price point. We've got $20 to $40. So we're getting up past that first tier into bottles that are kind of second tier. You know, you've got Woodford Reserve in this area. You've got Maker's Mark 101. My ultimate favorite in this is probably Redwood Empire's Lost Monarch. Uh, it is a fantastic bottle. It's hovering right there around 40 but it can't be on this list, unfortunately. Knob Creek 9 is also a good one in there. The 100 proof one, obviously, not the single barrel. They're a little bit more expensive. They're much more in the 60 to 80 range. And all of those are good bottles. Don't get me wrong. But my absolute favorite in that price point is actually the Knob Creek 7 Year Rye. It is probably my favorite bottle to make an old fashioned with. I love ryes in old fashions. Just gives it a little bit of a bite that cuts through my recipe, which is tending to be a little bit more sweet just because I think it appeals to more people. And that Knob Creek rye really brings it together. It is a 51% rye, so it is what they call a cheater rye. And it's a great sipper. It's a great entry level rye, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of your like entry level mid tier bourbons in that range, but to me, I actually like the rye better. I think they mature a little bit quicker. I really enjoy it. I think it's great, and I think it's the best of that 20 to 40 price range. Moving on to the 40 to $60 price range. Now we're getting kind of into those shelf staples. That's really what you want in that range. You want something that's a Friday night pour. You want something that you're going to be able to reach for at any point and enjoy it. It's not necessarily gonna be the most complex thing, 
but it's readily available. And when you finish a bottle, you can go get another one. So 40 to $60. Let's talk about some of the ones that I didn't pick. First off, Four Roses Single Barrel is in this category. Now, if you've watched this channel for any period of time, I don't particularly care for Four Roses. Their profile, I know they have 10 recipes. I know that they have two mash bills, five yeast strains, whatever, and supposedly you can find your perfect bourbon in any one of those 10. I do have the 10 recipe set that I'm going to do at some point. I just need to psych myself up for it because I have yet to have a Four Roses that I truly, honestly enjoyed. There are some that have come close. There are some that are very expensive that people love that I just don't care for. It's just not my profile. But if you're looking for an available bourbon, Four Roses Single Barrel definitely fits that bill and it's in the price range. You got Michter's Small Batch. I just talked about that recently as a competitor for Blanton's. It's a smooth, easy sipper. If that's what you're looking for, that's a fantastic choice. Old Forester 1910 is in this price range. That is a fantastic bottle. The one that I would say, if it wasn't on every single one of my lists, would be Maker's Mark Cast Strength. Maker's Mark Cast Strength, I think, is my ideal bottle in that $40 to $60, but I talk about it on pretty much every list I've ever made, so I'm self-disqualifying that one from this list so that I can make room for Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Wild Turkey Rare Breed, I think, is the best in the $40 to $60 range because it's versatile. It's 114.6 proof. It is six to eight years old. It's wild turkey. Very sweet, very bourbony notes. Some people say it tastes like cherry cola. I get that. It just doesn't have the grounding notes that I typically enjoy, although I'm not always in the mood for that. Sometimes I'm just in the mood for a bottle that I can mindlessly drink, and that definitely fits that bill. So $40 to $60 price point, Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Getting into our higher tier bottles we've got the 60 to 80 dollar price point there's a few bottles here that i think would be ideal first one being four roses small batch select already kind of talked about that four roses isn't my thing out of their available lineup though the small batch select is probably the closest thing to something that i enjoy 104 proof kind of tones that herbal down and that's kind of what i'm looking for is not as herbal not as floral not as perfumey whatever you want to call it four roses has that in spades and it's just not my thing honestly so then Moving on past that is Knob Creek Single Barrel Select. That is their nine year, 120 proof, and they are fantastic. I know I talk about them all the time as well. Each one is a little different and I love that. I love that you can get just that range of flavor, although that is also the detractor because if you're just getting one off the shelf, you can't try it before you buy it. You never know what you're gonna get. That one is ultimately not my favorite. And when I say my favorite, it's gonna make a whole lot of sense. My favorite in that price category is Jack Daniel Single Barrel Barrel Proof. So it is not a bourbon. It is a Tennessee whiskey, although you can call it a bourbon. It exported as bourbon. That's a whole big debate. It can be labeled bourbon. They choose to call it Tennessee whiskey, ultimately. That doesn't change the fact that it is absolutely delicious. The flavor is bananas, quite literally. It is fantastic. It is sweet. It is savory. It is all different things depending on the barrel, but I've never had a bad one. I've said for a long time that if you are passing on Jack Daniels simply because of old number seven, you are missing out on some of my favorite whiskey. Jack Daniels is putting out some crazy stuff, some really good stuff year in, year out. Special releases are great. They put out the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye, which is actually our favorite bottle of 2023, surprisingly enough. But this Single Barrel Barrel Proof Tennessee whiskey, bourbon, whiskey, whatever you want to call it, is my favorite bottle in that $60 to $80 range. So moving on to the higher end, we've got the $80 to $100 range. And there's a lot of bottles in that range, and there's not a lot to choose from. Honestly, there's quite a few scotches and Japanese whiskeys that I'm gonna I would pick in this price range. I think in that $80 to $100, you are seeing the the point of diminishing returns with bourbon, unless it's a limited edition, which limited edition literally puts it off this list entirely. So there's Ardbegs, there's Nico whiskey, there's the Balvany Caribbean cask. Caribbean, Caribbean, whatever. Those are all bottles that I think I would personally buy at this price point over any of the bourbons. The Old Ezra 7, rye and bourbon are kind of in that range, but they didn't meet my criteria. They're actually very not available in Pennsylvania right now. So ultimately, my bottle is Widow Jane Decadence. So I actually had it for the first time that I can remember. I'm pretty sure I've had other Widow Jane stuff this past Sunday at a bottle share but it's sweet, it's a little bit savory, it actually tastes pretty good. It's not gonna be one that I have to keep on the shelf, but I would probably buy one 
just to have, probably give it to people who are earlier on in their whiskey journey, but it's not gonna be one that I'm reaching for pretty often. But I still think that it's a solid, easy sipper with a good amount of complexity, and that's ultimately what I'm looking for here. Something a little special, not necessarily every day, and that really fits the bill for me. So, final category before I reveal my absolute favorite. Final category is $100 plus. Pennsylvania doesn't carry a whole lot that is readily available at that price point because stores just don't have it. So I kind of cheated a little bit on my pick because there's not really anything in that $100 plus price point aside from scotch that is available in more than 100 stores. I'm not picking a scotch, but Aberlour Abenad is a fantastic cask strength scotch. It is about 120 bucks. I love everything about it. As a person who's malt curious, we'll say, I prefer bourbon, but I'm open to malt whiskeys. Aberlour Abenade is fantastic to me. It's probably my favorite scotch, and a lot of people would say that that has a lot to do with proof, and you're for sure correct. The one that I have is 120 plus proof, and I enjoy it. It is easily gettable in most places. I think it was available at like 200 some stores. In Pennsylvania. It does suffer shortages and it has gone up quite a bit of money. The last time I bought one, I think it was 90 bucks. So it's now up $30 past that. Another one that I would pick up would be Red Breast Cash Strength. It is just above that $100 mark. It's 105. It's amazing. It's got some bourbony type notes while still being a malt whiskey. It just doesn't have an overwhelming amount of malt, which is something that I don't like in Scotch or other world single malt whiskeys. To me, it's a great bottle. Once again, I'm not choosing a Scotch here. I am going with Calumet 16 or Calumet or whatever you want to call it. I've always pronounced the U. The 16 year old, it's about 160 bucks here in Pennsylvania. It is not available in a whole lot of stores. I think it was like 15 stores, but there's a hundred some available online and I know it's all over elsewhere in New Jersey, in Maryland, in Delaware that I've been to that all have it on the shelf. It is decently available, so I'm fine with putting it on my list. It's not one that I particularly care for, it is not over oaked, but it just doesn't have a ton of flavor. It is 1792 Barton sourced, and I think that I would take quite a few products over it. However, a lot of those products are not readily available so that they cannot be on my list. So Calumet 16, best bottle over $100, finishes out our price points. And finally, we get to the question, what am I drinking? What is my absolute favorite available bottle? Let me savor this last sip, and then I'll let you know. Oh man, it's so good. So I have six available bottles here. It is one of the ones that I've talked about so far. And if you know me at all, it's gonna make perfect sense. It is Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proof, Tennessee whiskey, bourbon, whatever you wanna call it. This one is specifically selected by Chris Fletcher. It is a fantastic bottle. It's also a mini bottle and that's partly why I love it. I don't love the, but. That's fine. Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof, I think is my ideal whiskey. It has all of the characteristics of a bourbon. It brings heat, it brings savoriness, it brings sweetness. It doesn't lose it if you put it over ice. It doesn't lose it in a cocktail. And it is ultimately my favorite available bottle. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What is your favorite available bottles? You can do price points like I did. You can just tell me what your favorite available bottle is. Don't forget to like and comment on this video. Comment with your favorite available bottle. Comment content you want us to make in the future and we'll see if we can make it happen. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and we hope you'll join us in drinking like a gentleman. Cheers. Freaking trucks all over the place today just like my brain. My brain is all over the place today too, so.